Hello, my name is Katherine Leach and I am the Instructional Specialist for English Language Arts in Pasadena ISD. And this session is going to be a curriculum overview for seventh grade English Language Arts personalized learning. Our hope for you after finishing this portion of the module is that you will begin to understand and be able to describe how student outcomes of our PL model are achieved in your course and also describe how the traditional and PL pathways are alike and different through the lens of curriculum. Here's how we're going to accomplish those objectives during our time together. First, I will lead an overview of the student outcomes. Then you will hear about the similarities and differences you can expect from the curriculum between traditional and personalized learning. Finally, you will see how those student outcomes will be achieved through your course. Let's take a look at the student outcomes in personalized learning that will be achieved through English language arts in seventh grade. Let's take a look at the three outcomes of personalized learning specifically through a curriculum lens and think about how we achieve concepts, content knowledge, and habits of success in an English language arts classroom in our personalized learning model. Students follow a project-based curriculum to develop cognitive skills. Projects in our personalized learning model, students follow a project-based curriculum to develop cognitive skills. While working on projects, students develop their cognitive skills through many avenues, including workshops, small group instruction, and targeted resources. Projects require students to work on their higher order thinking skills. The rigor at the project level is at the Apply, Analyze, Synthesize, and Evaluate levels, or WEBS DOK levels three and four. In order to put these cognitive skills to work, our students must first develop a knowledge base of vocabulary, ideas, events, concepts, properties, and details related to a given academic subject. This learning happens during self-directed learning. During self-directed learning time, students are working at the Identify, Describe, and Explain rigor levels, or WEBS DOK levels one and two. Lastly, without the habits of success, none of this learning would be possible. Skill development can only happen on a developmental pathway that integrates cognitive, social, and emotional skills. Now let's take a look at the content in your specific course. Right here, you have a draft of the seventh grade language arts year at a glance. I say it's a draft because a few of the focus areas may be shifted around over the course of the summer. But to give you an idea of how the course is structured, I'm gonna go over this. You'll see that the top row are the names of projects. And if you taught in Pasadena ISD last year, many of these will look familiar to you. Outsiders on trial, students read either The Outsiders or Lamb to the Slaughter followed by another short story and take one of the characters and put them on trial to determine if he or she is guilty of murder. Um, the True Story of Anne Frank is a new project for all teachers. Um, teachers voted this year to replace a, pro a project from a previous year with a project about Anne Frank where students research aspects of the Holocaust and Anne Frank's life and read nonfiction articles and create their own mini lesson. And then they also read parts of the play, The Diary of Anne Frank, to study how fact was turned into fiction. In selfies, students read multi-genre texts and do research on their career pathways. And in Rhythm and Flow, students read The Crossover by Kwame Alexander and write their own narrative poems. The next row that you'll see on this chart are the power focus areas. And in power focus areas, students learn foundational knowledge that they will need to work at deeper levels in the projects. So for example, they would do elements of story and figurative language focus areas before doing the Outsiders on Trial project because they're going to get that foundational knowledge about storytelling and figurative language in the focus area. And then they'll use that knowledge to make their own products in the project. This next row is additional focus areas, and those are for students who either need extension because they're done with all their other work, or for students who might need more support in a particular area. Our final row is what we call the challenge area. Again, this might be for students who are done with all their other work and need some extension work to do. 
you also might want to use these reading checks to help support students and make sure that the reading they're doing for the project um, is supported. So what's similar to traditional learning? Well, students in PL are still responsible for learning all the, the TEKS. Um, many of the stories and projects are the same, whether you're in a traditional classroom or a PL classroom. Students still take the STAR exam in seventh grade for both reading and writing. English language learners will still take TELPATH and are responsible for growing as um, readers, writers, thinkers, and speakers in English. And we still use MAP data to inform our instruction. So all of those kinds of things we use to inform instruction the same way we do in, in traditional curriculum. Um, there are many ways to deliver instruction, just like there are in traditional. So you may find yourself teaching to the whole class. You may be pulling small groups. You may be doing mini lessons. Students may be working in pairs and groups or even independently um, to learn. You teachers still plan for initial instruction, for intervention, and for extension with their PLC teams. What you might find as different in PL is that grade level teams support all content areas. Because some cognitive skills appear in more than one content area, you may find yourself working with science, social studies, and math teachers to talk about something like a thesis and what it looks like in different contents. Learning is more self-directed in PL and the level one and two DOK knowledge that teachers would be coming up with all of the resources in traditional, many of those materials are provided for you in PL in the platform. Social emotional learning and soft skills, or what we call habits of success, are built into the curriculum in PL, where in traditional, it would be upon the teacher to find all of the resources for that. Um, you may find that you need to learn some new vocabulary words for personalized learning, but you may also find that some of those vocabulary words are very similar and talk about concepts that you know from teaching in a traditional classroom. Um, and you will be learning new ways of accessing learning and materials, as will students. Let's talk about the structure of a project. Projects in PL are very exciting and interesting for students. They're based on things that students will find relevant um, in their lives. And this resource defines the components of a project in order to illustrate the purpose behind personalized learning project design. There are key elements to consider for each project component. While learning about each piece of a project, pay special attention to the values of each project component in order to support your own instruction. We start with an entry event. Projects begin with a learning experience, which introduces the project, the final products, and how cognitive skills and content knowledge are developed. Entry events are meant to generate interest for students and establish relevance about the topic and cognitive skills in the project. They're the first learning experience of the project and are often whole group and teacher-led. Activities. To help student make progress, activities offer opportunities to practice a cognitive skill and move toward an associated checkpoint. Activities are intended for students to engage with and complete. In the platform, when you assign an activity to students, a copy is made for each student to complete. Activities target specific student needs to develop cognitive skills or essential content knowledge. They may be an individual, pair, or group learning experience. Resources. To support student needs, resources provide scaffolds or additional materials. Examples include tiered readings, models, and graphic organizers. In the platform, resources are a single link for which students can view but not edit. Resources are provided to meet specific student needs and help students as they prepare for checkpoints, feedback, or to complete final products. Teachers selectively assign resources to students based on their needs. Workshops. Teachers can employ mini lessons or workshops that target a group of students who would benefit from teacher-driven support with a specific cognitive skill, content understanding, or task need. Workshops are also designed to target data-driven specific student needs. They may occur throughout lessons, are typically teacher-led, simple, and held often in order to meet more needs of more students. Checkpoints. Throughout the project, students complete checkpoints. Checkpoints are opportunities for formal, formative assessment and feedback on cognitive skills. 
checkpoints often lead up to or contribute to the final products. At checkpoints, students and teachers assess progress on cognitive skill development and use that data to determine follow-up learning experiences. Checkpoints occur periodically throughout a project and are student-led individual tasks so that students may rehearse and receive feedback individually. This is an opportunity for students to receive feedback with the goal of improving before the final product. Checkpoint assessment is not, and, and since this is formative, it is not factored into a student's grade. Improvement. Students need time to understand the feedback they have received from their checkpoint work and apply it immediately to their continued development of cognitive skills or the revision of quality work. The opportunity to revise work is critical to building growth mindset and continual improvement for students. Having opportunities to revise work should be planned throughout a project. Based on feedback, students may benefit from a workshop, resource, activity, or revision of the checkpoint work to develop the skill. And final product. Once students have practiced their cognitive skills thoroughly, they demonstrate their learning in a final product. Final products serve as an authentic summative assessment of cognitive skills associated with the project. They are also authentic tasks that prepare students for work required later in life. Students may complete their final products piece by piece as they engage with checkpoints or at the end of a final task. All of the preparation and interaction for this learning experience develops cognitive skills and content knowledge needed for the final product. This is an example of a project page in seventh grade English language arts. Um, this is from the 2019-2020 school year. Like I said, we're moving um, Anne Frank in here to replace justices and injustices. Um, but for now, just to show you what's there, this is what the project looks like. So we have outsiders on trial, um, and these are the cognitive skills that are explored in that one. You will be doing selfies this year where students um, look at project where how they talk about how identities are formed in nonfiction and fiction texts, and then they do a career research project to make some decisions for themselves, and then Rhythm and Flow, where they read a narrative poetry book and then write their own narrative poetry. Let's talk about how focus areas and projects are related to each other. So during self-selected learning, students complete focus areas. And the focus areas are where they acquire their basic content knowledge that they're going to need later in the projects. So for example, in English language arts, a student would learn to identify claims and types of evidence in persuasive texts in a power focus area, but then in a project, they might create their own PSA using persuasive elements to communicate with a target audience. In a focus area, they would learn to identify character motivation and plot elements in short stories, but in a project, they would actually create an argument to condemn or exonerate a character accused of a crime in a mock trial, like they do in Outsiders on Trial. They might learn to identify figurative language and poetry in a focus area, but then they analyze a novel and create their own narrative in the project. So if students don't do a targeted focus area that aligns to that particular project, they may be missing foundational knowledge and struggle with completing the project. So it's really vital that students complete the given focus area um, as they're moving into the project. Examples of focus areas in seventh grade language arts for this year were things like elements of story, grammar fundamentals, point of view, structures, nonfiction texts, and so forth. And then students use their grammatical knowledge, their knowledge of sentence patterns to write in the projects. They use their foundational knowledge of stories, point of view, to analyze texts in the projects. So this is really foundational, important information. If you're a teacher new to PL, do not worry. We have lots of professional development opportunities this year. In August, we will have our focus meeting and more likely than not, it will be in modules and partly virtual um, to make sure that everyone stays safe um, during these times of quarantine. Um, we will additionally have cadres in September and November on top of the focuses and convenings, and you'll have plenty of opportunities to collaborate with teachers across the district as well as district leaders to backwards plan, calibrate on student work, and just get any questions you have answered. We'll do whatever we can to support you. 
We also have a support team. There's at least one person at each campus who it could be your go-to person for help. And on some campuses, you have more than one person. And you also have your district team, and that's me, I'm Catherine. Um, you have Sandy Dickerson and Sherry Grounds in Innovation and Development, and their whole role is to support teachers as they implement personalized learning. So you will also have your grade level teams and PLCs and your admin teams as well. What, we are more than happy to support you, and we look forward to a really awesome year in 2020 and 2021. Thank you so much.